What's up YouTube, my name is Kenneth. Today we have another tutorial for you. Last time we did a tutorial, we showed how to take a single image of the Milky Way and how to edit it in both Camera Raw and Photoshop to get a great shot of the Milky Way. This time we're going to take that one step further and we're going to make time lapse of the Milky Way and we're gonna use the same sequence of photos we used for that tutorial. And I'm gonna show you how I currently make my time-lapse videos from the images. So this tutorial, I'm going to use Camera Raw to do most of the editing. Uh, you probably would want to use Lightroom, but I don't have Lightroom, so I'm using Camera Raw. And then we're going to use After Effects to make our sequence, and then Premiere Pro to do the final editing. So this is my current uh, workflow. I hope you guys enjoy it. So here is the sequence we're going to use, and there's uh, no settings associated to these uh, pictures here, no uh, raw settings, so these are all raw files. This is a shot with a Canon uh, T3i uh, 600D, and the settings were, let's see what the settings were, the settings were uh, 40 seconds at f2.8, 1600 ISO, it was a 17 millimeter lens. Uh, usually those settings would give you uh, streaks from star trails, but because uh, I had the camera actually on a uh, telescope mount that was tracking the stars, the stars, there are no star trails. There is a little bit of blurriness in the foreground, but you uh, can't even notice it. So uh, that's the settings I used. And so here's the, the sequence we have, and we're gonna see how to turn this into a really nice video, uh, time-lapse of the Milky Way. So the first thing to do is we wanna find a picture in the time-lapse sequence that will kind of represent the entire sequence. You want one that is kind of, uh, kind of representative of the entire sequence. So let's choose, I would say, one of these shots. So this is a good image. Let's open it in Camera Raw. So right click, open in Camera Raw. We're gonna edit the image here in Camera Raw and all of the editing is actually gonna happen here in Camera Raw um, or just about most of it. So last time we prepared the image for Photoshop with Camera Raw, but this time we're gonna pretty much do all the editing here. And so um, we're gonna push the image further in Camera Raw than we did before, because before we were editing it in Photoshop. But with time lapse, we need to do all the editing here. So um, let's push up the exposure. And last time we pushed it up about one stop, but I think we'll go a little further this time. And um, let's put a very high contrast curve on it. So we'll go to curves, we'll choose a linear curve, and we'll give it a really high contrast curve something like that. We'll choose both points and we can move this curve around look, and we'll look for a very good spot to put it. And I kind of like it here. I'm looking in here in the dust lanes to try to bring out the most contrast here in the Milky Way between the dark part of the dust and the light part of the Milky Way. So that's where I'm really kind of putting my eye at where I'm trying to find a good spot for contrast. So that's pretty good. Now let's go to uh, the temperature, and this is a little too cool. We gotta warm it up about here maybe. That's 3750, uh, and then it looks too green, so we'll add some magenta. It also it seems, to, it, to me, it cools it down too when we add this magenta back in. Um, about there, I think, plus 18, around that. Okay, let's um, do some noise reduction because we can zoom in and see how noisy the image is. So that's found um, here in the detail and we can give it luminance and uh, you can see the luminance really helps dramatically. You can see the noise kind of disappear. To me, it disappears to about 60 um, and we're gonna just leave the detail at 50. All right, we're looking pretty good. Um, to me it looks a little too bright so let's go back to the curve and we can um, hit the arrow buttons to drop the curve just a bit I think that looks good to me okay let's go to lens correction um, I like to uh, add some light in the corners when we shot this wide open at f2.8 it adds that those dark corners so we want to lighten them up obviously you can go too far we don't want to go too far we want it to kind of give a flat field across the image I think that looks pretty good okay um, this is pretty much it um, 
you could play with the saturation a little bit, but you know I think it it looks pretty good. So I don't think we really need to touch that. Um, you can add a little more contrast by playing with the black slider here. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so once you like the image, you can click done. So this image is done, and if we go to the next image, you can see it, it doesn't look very good. So what you want to do is you want to apply the settings in this image to all of the images, and the way to do that is you right click on the image. Um, you can't really see here. Let's go to essentials and put the image up high. Right click on the image. We can go to uh, develop settings and copy settings. So we've copied the settings associated with this raw file. Now we can select all of the images with uh, control A and we can right click on it and we can now go to develop settings and paste settings. So it's going to paste these settings to every single one. Um, here are the settings that we can um, allow to be copied to each one and we can do all of them if we wanted to or, or we can do just the ones checked and we'll just do the ones checked. We didn't use crop, stop, spots of removal or local adjustments so we can just do these ones here and click OK. Okay, so now it has um, put the settings for each picture. We can go to the, back to the film strip, and we can we can see the time lapse move now, and uh, it looks really good. So the next step here is to load these images in After Effects. So let's pull up After Effects. So here we have After Effects, and to load these images in After Effects, we can double click here, and we can import them. Um, you can click on the first raw file. And you can see raw, uh, camera raw sequence will be checked. Format will be camera raw, and we're going to import it as footage. So go ahead and click open. Here it is, and it'll pop up camera raw, and we can just go ahead and click OK. We're going to use the settings we've already uh, made. And so here we can see the sequence, uh, the raw sequence. And the first thing I like to do is I want to change the um, bits per channel from 8 to 16, and we can click OK. Second thing to do is we're going to drop the sequence uh, and onto a new composition. So we can drag it here and let go, and that will create a new composition. Let's rename the composition from image to, um, let's just call it Milky Way. And here we have it. Uh, let's choose a, a, a spot on the timeline, kind of in the middle somewhere. And we can see the uh, the image on the composition it looks really good. So let's right click on our composition and go to composition settings. So here we are in composition settings, and we can see that the uh, width and height are huge for this video. Um, they're at 5,184 pixels by 3,456 pixels, and the reason they're so large is because uh, that's the uh, size of the raw file, and so. Um, we're probably not going to want it that big and we can right click here on the presets or we can click on the presets and we can see all these great presets. If we wanted to we could do a 4K film or we could do a 2K film something like that but uh, what we're going to do instead is I know I just want to make a 1080p uh, YouTube video for, for this so I'm just going to put it at uh, 1920 and I'm going to keep the aspect ratio locked so instead of being uh, 1080 it's 1280. And uh, that'll be nice because when we're done and we're going to do our final editing in Premiere Pro, that this sequence will be a little bit bigger, so we're not sure uh, how we want it cropped yet. So I, I like to keep the final decision of where we're going to crop the sequence uh, at the very end. So we'll leave it here, and we'll click OK. Now you can see that uh, our image is the size of this uh, blue box, but our composition is only the size of this inner box and so we need to um, we need to zoom out or basically we need to change the uh, the scale of the um, the sequence so we can go down here to transform we can go to scale and we can change the scale to fit our composition we can zoom in and I found that um, for my camera it's about 37.1 and that fits perfectly so we're pretty much done with After Effects now. After Effects doesn't do a very good job of editing these raw sequences. If I hit play, watch what happens. Right now it's loading the very next frame. And now it's loading the next frame. 
and you can see it's really slow and it, you can't do any playback here and it's pretty much a waste of time so I wouldn't recommend doing much here at least with the raw sequence so as soon as you get the sequence and and this composition done I like to render it out so let's go ahead and drop Milky Way onto our render queue and we can start rendering it you can change the um, the codec uh, the codec I really like is Cineform AVI. Uh, you could do uh, 4K films with that and it wouldn't be too huge. I can't do that right now because my trial version of Cineform has uh, expired. So right now I'm stuck with AVI. I'm just going to use AVI um, and we're going to uh, make it a lossless. So a lossless AVI is absolutely huge, uh, but with 1080p and only about 20 second, sh uh, 20 second sequence, it's um, it's manageable it's only a few gigabytes so uh, if you were doing a 4k film at 20 seconds uh, with lossless AVI it would be absolutely huge so I wouldn't recommend that but it's okay for for this so let's go ahead and click render now rendering will take a while um, it, you can see it still hasn't done the first slide okay here's the first frame and uh, it's still working on it so where's the next frame there's the second frame and there are 475 frames uh, so it's a 19 second time lapse it's going to take it says here 42 minutes to render so we're going to let it render and we'll get we'll continue on once it's done so the file finished rendering in After Effects so let's open it in Premiere Pro so here we are in Premiere Pro and all I've done is I've uh, imported our file from uh, After Effects and I put it in this project and there's no sequence for it or anything like that so this is just the video file uh, called Milky Way and we can see here here it is in here in our source so uh, what we're gonna want to do is first we want to make a new sequence so you can click this button here and click sequence um, we're gonna want the final product to be 1080p at uh, 20, 24 frames a second so um, this is a good sequence here uh, 1920 by 1080p 24 and we can call it uh, Milky Way I'm going to put it in the right folder and we can drop our video file into the sequence uh, and here is our sequence here now if you remember we made our composition in After Effects to be 1920 by 1280 uh, to fit the aspect ratio of the camera but this is 1920 by 1080 which is a little uh, wider a little thinner um, and so what we can do is we can now make our final decision on how we want to crop the image so I can go over here and change the position and you can see the image over here is moving as I move this uh, slider so if right now I would say that looks good at about 525 but as you can see as we move up here I would say it doesn't look as good 525 doesn't look that good I would rather show more of the Tufa so 441 looks better here in my opinion and if we go all the way to the beginning I would say what looks really good to me is more sky here 620, 642 so what we can do is we can have the position change over time and so what we can we can do is we can start adding keyframes so we'll add a keyframe here uh, at the beginning and I think we do want 642 at the beginning or 640 640 is probably perfect and then as we get to the end about here we want to see some of the tufa still so I at least I would and so I'm going to move it down to about here 445 and it will interpolate in between the two keyframes so we'll start and it's going to move over time and I think that looks pretty good and you can see the movement um, here so it moves from there to there just that little bit of movement I think will look really good for this time lapse so here we are in Premiere Pro and in Premiere Pro you really want to do the final editing so you might uh, add a title or something like that and we'll call it Milky Way Milky Way title um, and we'll we'll type Milky Way and then maybe your name you know just do some quick you know how you would how you would uh, do your final editing something like that 
um, and we'll put the title here do some transitions something like this I think so here we go Milky Way Kenneth Brandon and then the film fades in at the end you probably want to fade it out and I think that's pretty good so um, you can of course add another sequence in there and do your final editing here in Premiere Pro um, when you're done you can of course save your project uh, then I hit uh, control M to render and here's uh, the render dialog um, for rendering I want to use uh, H.264 the preset I use usually is 1080p uh, 24 high quality what I'll want is um, the frame rate is actually 23.976 so choose that uh, use high quality rendering and you can either queue it if you've got some more things you want to render or you can just click export okay just about done perfect now let's uh, watch the file so here's the result I think it turned out pretty good um, when you're watching it back you might see something you don't like and you might have to change it again um, for instance to me it looks a little too noisy so maybe I would bump up the noise reduction also there's a bump right there and uh, to get rid of bumps what I like to do is I do a higher resolution than 1080p in After Effects. I'll do 2K. And then in, I'll put the resulting uh, video file back into After Effects. And then I'll do warp stabilization or whatever the stabilization, stabilization is called. And it does a great job for getting rid of bumps like that one. And it also uh, will get rid of shakiness due to wind or anything like that. I uh, highly recommend stabilizing your clips if they're a little shaky. Um, the other thing that you might notice, not in this one but other ones, is if the, the lighting changes from the beginning to the end or if it flickers or uh, if for some reason the, the camera raw file needs to be different from the beginning to the end, then I would definitely uh, suggest using the program LR Time Lapse and that will let you uh, kind of change the settings over time. Uh, and it works really good. It also does a really good job of getting rid of flicker um, due to changing light. So uh, that's pretty much it. This is my current walkthrough uh, or workflow. Anyway, it's constantly changing. So if you guys see anything I could have done better, please let me know. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I do have a time lapse coming out in a couple days I'm really excited about. So I'll put a link to that on the screen and in the description if it's available. And if it's not, it'll come out in a few days. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. And of course, have a great day.